guys, so I just thought this was an important uh, topic to talk about. Actually, I'd read a couple articles about this over the last few days, and I thought maybe the sources were getting it wrong, but uh, I finally found an article about it in the Washington Post, so now I've seen it in four or five uh, papers, and apparently uh, this is regarding the FDA and new sunscreen filters. So uh, when Congress passed... Uh, the CARES Act, I believe it was the Coronavirus Aid uh, Relief Economic Security Act. Uh, they had a little uh, snippet in there urging the FDA to look at sunscreen filters and approving new filters, which sounded exciting, although it has nothing to do with COVID or anything. I, I failed to see any link in it. But anyway, so maybe that'd be a good thing. Maybe we can finally get Uvenol A+, Tinsorb S, Tinsorb M in the U.S., and maybe have some access to some great sunscreens. However, sadly, the FDA really took it in the opposite direction. Instead of looking at approving new filters, they're really looking at um, the safety of old filters, organic chemical filters that already have been approved here, or already in use here, Avobenzone, octanoxate, uh, that have already been used in tons of sunscreen. So instead of looking at new filters, it sounds like the FDA is looking at, uh, really, as of this point, it looks to me like they've only recognized two filters as generally recognized as safe and effective. Zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, mineral filters, which are fine, they're mineral filters, but they don't work well for everybody. They can be very drying. They can leave a white cast if you have a deeper skin tone. It's not very flattering. A lot of the sunscreens, even the ones with tint for very deep skin tones, aren't very friendly uh, in terms of coloring and how they look. So it sounds like the FDA is rolling back. Uh, so instead of looking at Tinsor Bass, Uvenil A+, Uvenil T150, those exciting things, sounds like they're looking at things that already exist and already being used here and maybe eliminating them. They uh, mentioned to manufacturers that they have 45 days to send data that supports that these uh, filters are generally recognized as safe if they want to keep selling these sunscreens. So they basically gave them a deadline. So they have 45 days for manufacturers that are selling any organic chemical sunscreens in the U.S. to give them data so they can keep selling them. And if they're not allowed to keep selling them, then in the U.S. we're left with literally zinc and titanium dioxide if that's what happens so they have 45 days and then after that uh, the fda gets one year to review that data that was sent in and make a decision so it doesn't sound like tomorrow these sunscreens are going to be stopped being sold but if the fda has their way it sounds like the way they want it they only want these two filters in the U.S. That's how I'm taking these articles. I mean, you can interpret this however you want. There's a lot of legal jargon and things like that in there. But uh, anyway, the other thing they pointed out was uh, Hawaii banning some chemical uh, ingredients such as octocrylene. Uh, and then what was the other one? Uh, another one that they believe was causing coral reef damage. So they kind of want that eliminated from sunscreens in the U.S. altogether, which I don't know if they want to do that. That's one thing, but maybe approve some of these new other filters. So at least some people have an option to not only have to be able to rely on mineral sunscreens, which generally mineral sunscreens can be great, but a lot of the chemical filters, there's no match. I mean, in terms of effectiveness, longevity, things like that, for like a zinc oxide sunscreen to get like a 50 or 60, especially UVA protection, it's going to have to be like thick mask-like, which um, I don't, when I go to the beach and when I'm outside a long time or like in the sun, I don't rely on a mineral sunscreen. I typically rely on a chemical sunscreen because they're easier to reapply uh, and it's just easier to get a thinner layer and more spread spreadable uh, than what mineral sunscreens can offer. So it sounds like uh, we've got some things to be concerned about. They're also concerned about octocrylene degrading into benzenophenone, benz, benz, the carcinogen benzene, over time, which uh, just came out this summer when a lot of uh, missed sunscreens ended up testing positive for benzene. So it sounds like the FDA is really going to roll back a lot um, 
So I'm not exactly sure what I should do. I mean, I don't sell any sunscreen, so I don't have any data to send them. But I, I, I think they need to hear from customers and, you know, urge urging them to at least, if they're going to roll back some of these organic filters, at least look at some of the newer ones that are out there. Uh, so a lot of us don't have to continue to smuggle good sunscreens in. I mean, there's no U.S. made chemical sunscreen, in my opinion, that can compare to some of the Roche-Posay sunscreens, EV sunscreens, or Bioderma sunscreens. It just can't. It's not even the manufacturer's fault. They're just using what they have to work with that's legal in our country to work with. So it's not even their fault. But imagine how much um, innovation could happen if some of these companies in the U.S. had the ability to create some amazing sunscreens with some amazing filters. But at this point, they don't. And it sounds like if the FDA gets their way, um, they're really going to be set back. So anyway, I'm very concerned about this. So I will link to this article below. Uh, leave your thoughts or comments or your uh, thoughts on it. Uh, anyway, below. I love hearing from you guys. And I just thought this was important to get out. And hopefully some of these newspaper uh, are getting the wrong information somewhere, but it doesn't seem like it. At first, the first two articles, I'm like, well, maybe that's not true. Maybe, maybe they interpret it wrong. But when now the Washington Post and CNN post things, then it's like, well, Sounds like that's what's happening. So anyway, leave your thoughts and comments below. Love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much. Bye guys.